Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu everybody. Welcome to the first online ICNA National Symposium. We are very happy uh, to see everyone on this blessed Friday. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says in Surah Baqarah, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ uh, And when my slave asks about me, indeed, uh, certainly I am near. So at this time, uh, when we are forced to observe, observe social distancing, uh, we should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was always near and will always be near to us. And so for that reason, uh, for this symposium, we have selected the theme, فَإِنِّي قريب, that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is near. So over the next day and a half, we will be joined by an array of speakers at the comfort of our homes to discuss the ongoing issues addressing the current COVID-19 pandemic and being in a Muslim household, uh, we may be able to benefit. Also, uh, we will be discussing how being a part of a uh, national uh, Islamic movement can better prepare us uh, for situations like this. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, Brother Javed Siddiqui, who is currently the Amir of Islamic Circle of North America. Uh, he is going to be talking about whoever forgets Allah, forgets himself. Uh, in these trying times, uh, we have often turned to dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we want to make sure that we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and so uh, Brother Javed is going to be talking to us about how we can be in that consistent remembrance so that we make sure that uh, we don't forget ourselves. So with that, we have Brother Javed Siddiqui. I think your mic is on mute, Brother Javed. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Rabbi Shrah Li Sadri Wa Sir Li Amri, Wahlu Al-Uqdatan Min Lisani Yafqahu Qawli. Dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I wanted to begin on the topic that was assigned to me today <clears throat> about those people who forget Allah and Allah would cause them to forget themselves. Brothers and sisters, this topic is directly taken from the 18th ayah, the 19th ayah of Surah Al-Hashr. And I really want to recite those ayat to you. The impact of these ayat on the heart of a believer is something that we cannot underestimate. It's something that is so magnificent and I don't want to lose the opportunity to do that today. This last passage of Surah Al-Hashr is one of the amazing passages. And I really want to share with you the beauty and the power of these words. <clears throat> so inshallah, Let's listen to this together, inshallah ta'ala. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghadim wa attaqu allaha. Inna allaha khabirun bima ta'amaloon. ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون صدق الله العظيم My brothers and sisters First of all, I would like to welcome you to our first online symposium. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
has its plans. And we as humans plan and spend so much effort in this planning. But we realize through events such as these that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan will always be the winner. He will always have the upper hand. Over the past several months, the ICNA convention team has been working very hard on the 45th annual convention. Only until about a few weeks ago, we realized that this is not something that's going to happen. And we accept Allah's decree. We accept Allah's decree and we realize that he is the best of planners. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> this epidemic, this pandemic is really forcing us on a few things. It's really forcing us to reflect on why are we at this stage? What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is he trying to teach us at this moment? What are some of the lessons that we can take from this pandemic? <clears throat> people, people around the world, people are sick, people are in pain. People have lost, lost their livelihood and their entire life savings. People have lost jobs. The number of people who have filed for an unemployment has skyrocketed in the last few weeks. There's a state of fear and the state of anxiety and stress. Brothers and sisters, this pandemic is really putting us, putting the human being in, in their place. We are being put in our place to recognize that there is a being, there is a power that is much beyond our abilities. Brothers and sisters, this pandemic and this virus that does not distinguish between the rich and the poor, the healthy and the sick, the old and the young, people are confused and bewildered and lost. And during this time, brothers and sisters, what we see is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that manifests itself. In this time of difficulty and challenge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would provide the ability to sift through the right and wrong. So that Allah may separate bad from good. In other places, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his wisdom is so amazing. He says, the ayah I want to stress on is the next one. Here's the words are next here. يُظِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَيَهْدِي بِهِ كَثِيرًا From the same example, from the same event, from the same circumstances, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the same book, He guides many and He misguides many. So the question for you and me, brothers and sisters, is which group are we going to be in? Are we going to take this pandemic and this event, this huge event that we have never seen the likes of in our lifetimes? Are we going to take this event and really take heed to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or are we going to be misguided? The choice is ours, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, this place of humility, a microscopic creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put the entire human race at its knees. People are faced and forced to stay home. People can't take care of their loved ones. They're scared for their own lives. They're not able to take care of their own loved ones if they get sick. And to the point where they can't even sometimes attend the janaza or the funeral prayers for, for those who passed, passed away. That is unprecedented. As of this morning, I saw a CNN heading which says, New York now has more confirmed cases than any country in the world. Any country in the world. Our hearts and our prayers go out to those people and their loved ones who find themselves helpless sometimes at this time. My brothers and sisters, the topic of this talk is based upon this ayah that I just recited. 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون These four beginning ayat, there are, there are four and three, there are a total of seven ayat in this last passage of Surah Al-Hashr. And they are so beautiful and they're so deep in their understanding and meanings. And when you look at them today, it seems like they've been revealed for today. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, believers fear Allah and let every person look to look to what he has sent forward for tomorrow. Fear Allah. Allah is aware of all that you do. Look at this construct of this ayah. The word taqullah has been mentioned twice in the same ayah. And a lot has been said about taqwa. And I'm sure every one of you have listened to lectures, read books, had discussions about this word of taqwa, which essentially means to create a barrier between yourself and the fire of hell. The concept of wiqaya, the concept of barrier, something that is going to protect you from the fire of hell. A barrier between you and the punishment of Allah. By doing what Allah commands you and by staying away from what Allah has forbidden. The word ittaqillah and taqwa of Allah is mentioned twice here, brothers and sisters. And because of the significance of this word, because this is the legacy of Quran, if you wanted to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what message is being delivered to mankind through the book of Allah, it is the taqwa of Allah. It is the fear of Allah. It is that concise legacy of Quran that Allah wants every one of us to understand. If we get to the root of this concept and to the root of the concept of taqwa, because when you think about this word, and we commonly translate that as fear, and that is true to some extent, but at the same time, there, is, there are different types of fear. There's a fear that when a person has of a snake, of a lion, of a predator, this is not that type of, that, that type of fear. The, here we are talking about a fear that, for example, when you have that fear of your father, if I drive carelessly and I get into an accident, my father would be upset. He's the one who bought me the car. If I don't work hard and I get an F on my grades, my father and my parents would be, hard, would, would, would be upset with me. That fear emanates from that love that we have for them, that respect that we have for them. That is the kind of fear. That is what taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means, brothers and sisters. I, all of, I want us all to understand that very well because that really defines our actions. When we have that fear and concern about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at every moment of our lives, in everything that we say and do, from the moment that we wake up in the morning to the, to the moment that we go back to our bed, if our entire day is structured around that, that's what Allah wants human beings to be aware of. That's what Allah wants human beings to develop in them. Then coming forward to the, on this ayah, who says, مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ That every soul must look at what they have put forward for tomorrow. And in this beautiful passage, in this ayah, this tomorrow is the day of judgment. This tomorrow is where you will be accounted for what you have done. It's interesting when you look at, there's so many other ayat of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day, on the day of judgment, he will say, قَالَ كَمْ لَبِثْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالَ كَمْ لَبِثْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ قَالُوا لَبِثْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمْ فَاسْأَلِ الْعَادِينَ He would ask them to say, how long have you remained on the earth? How many years? قَالُوا لَبِثْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمْ They will say, the disbelievers will say, that we only have lived uh, a day or about in a day. Ask those people who have been counting. Ask those malaika and those angels who have been counting. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa says, وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ يُقْسِمُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ مَا لَبِثُوا غَيْرَ سَاعَةِ And on the day of resurrection, the criminals will swear that they haven't left, they haven't lived in this life except a few hours. So many verses of Quran 
remind us that when we reach to the other life, when we reached on the other end of it, we would look back and feel like this entire life was just a day. This entire lifetime of 40, 50, 60, 80 years, 100 years, it just feels to everyone it was just like one day because the horrors, because the eternity will be visible now to you. You recognize where you have been and where you are going. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَاذَا تَكْسِبُ غَدَى No soul knows what will happen to them tomorrow. The ghada, this word, this word of ghada, which is tomorrow. وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُودٍ And no soul should know that where it's going to die. And I'm sure every one of us can relate to that concept, brothers and sisters. We have seen many relatives and loved ones who were born in one part of the world live somewhere else for the rest of their lives and just before their death they reach a very different place and the ayah ends with the message that allah is knowing in he knows what you are doing and then the next ayah begins where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ And brothers and sisters, I really want to take some time to talk about this concept about those people and don't be like those people who forgot Allah. Who forgot Allah. Let's look at the meanings of this concept. Let's look at the meaning of this word of Nisyan. Nasullaha fa ansahum and fusahum. They forgot Allah and Allah made them forget themselves. Allah made them oblivious of themselves. It's a very interesting concept. But when you start to dig deeper into the concept, you realize that how sad that moment will be for people to recognize this is that they were among those people who Allah made forget themselves. When we talk about Nasullah, I want you for a moment to think about a few concepts. I want you, I want to ask you, is humanity in a state where this word means something to you? Can we look at the world around us and look at the people around us and look at the nations of the world around us and look at it, when it from the concept of morality? When we talk about the Nasullah, they forgot Allah. Is that actually true in these days and in this time that we live in? Are basic standards of decency being followed? The decency that was that was taught to us by the moral, the moral code of conduct, which was revealed to us through prophets after prophets after prophets from the time of Adam alayhi salam. Are we following those standards of decency in speech, in communication, in lifestyle? What is going on with our families? Are we, is the state of the family today is a reminder to you that we have forgotten about Allah? Are our families are such that we could say, no, we do remember Allah when it comes to our families? When the nikah of a believer happens, the Prophet ﷺ used to give a khutbah in which he reminds of taqwa Allah, the fear and the consciousness and the awareness and the mindfulness of Allah four times in that short khutbah. The same khutbah that we use, that we always hear during the Friday prayers and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be back and be able to perform those prayers inshallah very soon. Today is the day of Friday and let's make dua. But brothers and sisters, when we look at our families, are we seeing signs of the forgetting of Allah? Is our, are our relations and obligations for each other according to what Allah has wanted us to do? When it comes to justice, when it comes to justice, are we seeing the sacredness of the lives of human beings around the world the same as what Allah wanted us to have? Are we seeing when people, you know, say, 
Quran refers to this this concept. This man would ask the, this man from the people of Fir'aun. He says, "Ataqulun, rajulan an yaqula Rabbi Allah." Do you kill a man just because he says, "My master is Allah"? Do we see signs of that? Does that show you? Does that tell you that there is an angle of forgetfulness of Allah? When it comes to the truth, brothers and sisters, the biggest truth in this universe that God is one, that God is one. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Inna shirk la dhulman azim." It's one of the biggest sins, biggest transgressions, biggest oppressions. When it comes to the truth, do we think we have forgotten Allah? We live in a time, brothers and sisters, where we we talk about the concept of relative morality. We talk about the concept of, well, I think this is right, or I don't think this is right. We live in a time where numbers matter. It's forty-nine to fifty-one. It's forty-nine to fifty-one, and that's what defines truth. Brothers and sisters, for the past. Few months, the greatest minds all around the world—the scientists, the biologists, the pharmaceutical companies—are engaged in trying to find a cure for this virus. When you think about this concept of Allah and forgetting of Allah, because you know many of us will tell you it's all about the science, it's all about what we see, it's all about. Or we can prove that this is something tangible, and they completely, completely are forgetting about Allah, the Creator, the one who is sustaining them, that the one who is giving them this life, this ability to move around, to have that social nearness. The contrast to which is the social distancing we are experiencing today, brothers and sisters. That beauty of life, when it comes to social nearness, and He has made us, He deprived us of this of this blessing that we have never thought could happen. Brothers and sisters, when it comes to accountability, what is the meaning of forgetting, forget, forget, forgetting Allah? When it comes to accountability, are people living the lives where they will say? That I live my life freely. I am not accountable to anyone. This concept of accountability, brothers and sisters, and we understand that concept very well. When we when we look at the the police car behind us, our heart jumps, right? Because we understand that the police can give us a ticket for speeding or not abiding by the by the rules of the road. When we look at the immigration. When we look at the IRS, when we look at our parents and family, when we look at our society, we have a concept of accountability. Now, why is this concept of accountability lost when it comes to Allah? Did we forget that Allah is there? Nasullah fa ansahum and fusahum. And you know what happens, brothers and sisters. When this continues on for some time, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, what does He do? فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ. Really seriously, ask this question to yourselves. Sit down and really contemplate for 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 some time and think about it and ponder and say, Did I forget Allah? You will have the answer. Did our societies and our communities forget Allah? Then, as a result, brothers and sisters, what happens in that case? فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ. And I want us to think about what does that mean when it comes to He is going to make us forget ourselves. What you see, brothers and sisters, this body that we see, this facade that we have here in front of you, this is not who you are or I am and we are. This is just a this is just a cover. To a cover for that soul that was deposited in us, brothers and sisters. When the angel brought the soul from 
from, from the heavens to, to this body of yours and mine, when we forget about Allah, Allah makes us forget about our soul. And now we are nothing but an animal. We are not nothing but an animal that only cares for its well-being, for this body, for all the comforts of lives and luxuries. I want to give you a very a quick, inshallah, example because my time is up. Inshallah, I'll try to conclude. Just imagine for a second that somebody, uh, a student gets admitted into an Ivy League school, uh, an amazing, very famous school. This student arrives on campus. Now this student is really impressed by the architecture of the school. He's impressed by the brand new dormitories. He's impressed by the state of art labs. He's impressed by the gigabit connectivity that we have. He's impressed by the sports facilities. And now he's just indulged into this environment around him and forgets the basic purpose of why he's been admitted to the school. He is going to get a real reality check when he gets into the examination hall. This is the same scenario that is happening with us, brothers and sisters. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ula'ika humul fasiqun. These are the people, and I looked at the, the definition of fasiqun, there's so many of them. It's a very interesting. It, it, it's described as the corrupt people. They knew what's right and what's wrong, but they still ignored the truth. The rebellious people, the disobedient to Allah, they are defiantly disobedient. They are the evildoers. These are the rebellious transgressors. And there are multiple translations of this word. Do we think, do we think we are one of those brothers and sisters? Do we want to be that, from that category of people? And before I leave you, I actually have a very quick homework for you. I really want you to think about this. I don't have the time to go through the rest of the ayat. I only covered two ayat. There are another five ayat in this passage. The very next ayat, there's a good news in that ayat. The ayat after that, that talks about how Allah would, if he would have revealed this Quran on a mountain. I really want you to sit down with your children. I want you to sit down as a family and think about what does that parable mean? What does that example mean? And I'll give you the tip. There's an answer at the end of the ayah. And finally, the last three ayat brothers and sisters have one of the most beautiful, beautiful collection of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 16 in total in those three ayat. I really, I really want you to go back and open Surah Al-Hashr and look at this last passage. There's so many resources out there. I'm sure you'll be able to find some resources in the Fasir that will really enlighten you about this concept of how if we don't want to forget Allah, we really, really must, we must familiarize ourselves with, with the attributes and the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has described himself in so many places in Quran. As a matter of fact, if you look at every single ayah of Quran, brothers and sisters, it ends. There's so many examples and there's so many definitions because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want you and me and all of us to forget him because the result of that forgetfulness, brothers and sisters, will be catastrophic. It will be way catastrophic than what we see around us today. So let's ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who take this call and uh, be, be really reminded uh, of what we are being reminded here today. And at the very end, I will say this, brothers and sisters, no matter what the circumstances are, the hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be always there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Those who has, those, or people who have committed Zulm against yourself, who have who really created access against yourself, do not despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one who forgets. He's the one who forgives all, all sins. Innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-raheem. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Well, uh, Brother Javed Siddiqui, for that great reminder um, of how we have to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all circumstances. Um, so first question uh, that we have is, how do we build this sense of taqwa in, 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 in quick? Because you, you compared it to being similar of how we fear our parents, but the idea behind that may be uh, that there's immediate repercussions uh, to that fear. And here, where it's a sense of taqwa with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can we uh, build on that? I think the answer, uh, that's a great question. Actually, the answer is in the last part of the passage. When we as human beings build that relationship, when we know who Allah is, what he has really, really done for us. If you take all those names, and if I want you to, and I want everyone to maybe try this out. If you make an exercise and go through all the names and start to really create a relationship. For example, Al-Ghafoor Al-Rahim, Al-Ghafoor Al-Rahim, Al-Rahman, Al-Quddus, Al-Wahhab. All these names, how do they manifest themselves in my life? Yeah. If we can create that matrix with our children, with our family members together, and think about it because even in the in the fourth ayah, in the fourth ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds everyone that this uh Quran And these examples, the last part of the ayah says, these examples we give to people so that they may think about it, they may ponder about it. And I think this is one part, brothers and sisters, I think we have stopped doing it as, as an ummah, as a nation, as this world. We have stopped thinking about the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what these ayat really mean for us as a human being. How can I recreate that relationship between myself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to these beautiful, beautiful attributes? In Surah Al-Hashr, uh, in the last passage here, there are 16. And as a matter of fact, if you go back to Surah Al-Hadid, a couple of surahs before this, there is a passage where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives another group of uh, attributes. It's a very interesting exercise. You may want to look it up and see how these were described and how those were described. As a matter of fact, there's an interesting uh, grammatical or language piece that is also an interesting part there. There's a there's a word that the wow is being used in Surah Al-Hadid, but that was not used here. Figure out what happened there. Figure out how these two are different. That would be a really an enlightening exercise for all of you, inshallah. Yeah, and I think uh, you have assigned us some uh, good exercises for us to continue to work on uh, even after we are done uh, the symposium, inshallah. Uh, so the next question uh, we have is, if you forget about Allah without repentance, Will you go to Jahannam? Uh, and I think the uh, uh, the writer is asking specifically uh, in, in the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, or doing your actions uh, with that intention. So the question is: If you forget Allah, will you go to Jahannam? Without repentance, will you go to Jahannam? Without repentance. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> well, again, I think the whole concept of judgment is always in the hands of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He is the only one who can decide. We are sometimes are really uh, embroiled in this whole scenario of who will be forgiven or who will not be forgiven. I think that's really not for us to judge. At the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows because we have so many examples from the hadith and the seerah of Prophet and uh, the, the mentions of this woman uh, who did so much, but one of her actions just to just to bring water or give water to a thirsty dog, got her into paradise. Now, yes, I think as, as a human being and as a believer, we must strive, we must do everything in our, in our power to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And this is why the Prophet reminded us, he said that uh, I'm the most pious of you, but I make istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than 70 times per day. So 
if that was the Prophet ﷺ, so we need to heed that call. We need to be aware of that. After our prayers, that's a very common practice that the Prophet ﷺ has used to do, and I think we should all engage in that. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah al -Azim. We must try to make that a habit, a conscious habit. This way, we would never be away from the mercy of Allah, away from the istighfar of Allah for any longer than the time between one prayer and the other prayer, if we haven't really done that even between that. So I think we need to get past the point and think about the opportunities that we have uh, in this concept of repentance. Uh, what happens to us at the end of the day is Allah's decision. And I think we really should focus more on what we can do uh, as long as we have. So everyone who is watching today, everyone who is listening today has the ability to ask for forgiveness. The question is, what are we going to do about it? Uh, Jazakallah khair, um, Brother Javed, that was um, really in enlightening. Um, and as the Amir of Ikna, I wanted to also personally thank you uh, for holding down the fort and really allowing for this symposium to come through. I think it's been very beneficial. And just from uh, looking at the stream of comments uh, throughout the talks, uh, people are really finding this beneficial. So Jazakallah khair, may Allah reward you uh, for, for all of your um, help and assistance with this. Uh, also, as I made an appeal at the beginning of the program, uh, please take a moment to go to www.icna.org slash donate. Uh, we did take a, a significant financial loss from having to postpone the ICNA convention. Uh, and this is not a complete replacement of it, but it is at least a way for us to be together during this pandemic and have our mashayikh share words of advice and wisdom uh, with us. So, Jazakallah khair. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.